Hello, it's Michael Bailey with Avacon, um, also known in many virtual worlds as Marcus Llewellyn, and I'd like to welcome you back to this video tutorial series on learning building skills in Open Simulator. Basic shapes like cubes, spheres, and pyramids are all great shapes to use for building. But by now, you've probably looked at amazing and unusual shapes and wondered, how did they do that? In this tutorial, you will begin to learn how to edit these basic shapes to make fantastic new building blocks to use in your builds. This information is very powerful but easy and it's where the fun in building really begins. In previous tutorials we have learned that all building starts with putting together basic shapes. Just like a real set of building blocks, different shapes can be stacked and put together to form new shapes. However, in Open Simulator, you can start with a basic shape and change it into something very different. Before you learn how to change or edit basic prim shapes, let's review the different ways you can res these basic shapes. There are two main ways you can res a basic shape. You can use the edit window to create a basic shape or you can create a default cube and then change its shape. Let's practice both ways now. One way to res basic prims is to right click on the ground and choose create from the menu. And then using the wand, clicking on the ground where you want your shape to appear. You can do this over and over again to create many shapes. But as you can see, they always create the same shape over and over again. So the other way to res shapes is to press Ctrl B on your keyboard to open the build window. And as you can see, we have a whole bunch of icons here that show you basic shapes you can res. You'll see the two of these are for plants, trees, and grass. Be aware that you can only res these if you own the land that you're resing on. So let's practice by resing something other than a cube, let's say a pyramid. And to res another shape, let's click on the wand at the top of your edit window, and now let's choose a cylinder. And again, let's now res a sphere. Using this method, practice selecting and resing each of the basic shapes shown. Now let's learn something new about resing. You can also begin by resing the default cube and then changing it to another default shape. If you res the cube and you look over your edit window, make sure the object tab is selected. And then if you look, you'll see a drop down box. And right now it says box, which is the default cube. But if we click on this drop down box, we'll get a whole list of all the basic shapes available to us. Practice by choosing each one and becoming familiar with all the shapes that are available to you. You'll notice that one of these is sculpted. Sculpted is a special kind of shape, and we're not going to cover that in this tutorial. We're going to wait for another tutorial to handle that one. But for now, play with the other ones and become familiar with them. Make sure you take time to play around with all of them and become familiar with them because this will make you a better and more creative builder in the long run. Something else you might notice is that if you start off with a basic cube and change it to something else, like say a tube, and then go back to the original cube, you'll see that the cube has changed shape. This is because some of the primitives depend on other primitives. They alter the properties of the original to create a whole new one. That's something we're going to learn more about in the following tutorials.
From this point on, building is just going to get cooler and cooler. What if you could just cut a chunk or a wedge out of a shape? You can cut different sized chunks out of shapes using the path cut technique. We're going to start experimenting with different basic shapes to see how this control affects each of them. The path cut begin control is located in your edit window under the object tab and you can see it's beneath the list of primitives. Path cut begin and end. The path cut begin and end control will cut a section out of any shape you res. The path it cuts is along the Z axis or the blue arrow. The width of the slice or chunk that is removed depends on the begin and end number values you choose. The values for these can range anywhere from 0 to 1.0. Let's explore the path cut in more detail. Let's start by opening your build window and resing a cube. Now, if you look at the path cut settings, you'll see that there are two boxes. One starts with a B, and that's the beginning of the cut. The other has an E, and that's the end of the cut. The difference between these two is that one starts from one side, and the other one starts from the other side. Now, smaller values will make it look like a chunk has been cut out of your prim. But if you use a much larger value, it will make your prim look like just a slice. Make sure you res many of the basic prim shapes and experiment with how path cutting works on them. You really want to familiarize yourself with the way that path cutting affects each kind of shape. Take your time and experiment as much as you need. Now, what if you could cut a hole in the middle of a shape and hollow it out? Well, yes, you can do this. Every basic shape can be hollowed out. In fact, even the shape of the hole can be changed. For example, you can put a square hole in a sphere or a round hole in a pyramid. Let's begin to learn about how to hollow a prim by resing a cube. Look into the object tab in your edit window. Below path cut, you'll see an option for hollow. By clicking on the up arrow, you can begin to hollow out your cube. Let's move our camera closer so we can get a better look at it. Larger values mean a larger hollowed out shape, and smaller values put in just a little hole. Now, as soon as you hollow out a prim, the hollow shape option becomes active. And as you can see, by default, it's just a square. But you can change this to a number of different things. You can change it to a circle. You can change it to a square. Or you can change it to a triangle. And you can play around with the hollow setting to see what this looks like on a prim. Let's raise another shape, let's say a cylinder, and see how that looks. Let's hollow it out and change the default shape to triangle. As you may have noticed, most prims are hollow on the z-axis or along the blue arrow. Go ahead and res several prims and play around with the hollow setting to see how it looks and how it changes things. Take special note that the tube, the torus, and the ring hollow out differently than other primitives. Let me show you what I mean. Let's select this torus and I'm going to 
path cut it. So you can see it cut in half. Now if we look at it and we increase the hollow, you can see that it actually hollows out from the inside. All of these shapes work in the same way. As you can see, this opens up some interesting possibilities. Go ahead and practice with this and play around with them to see what kind of shapes you can make. And now we've reached the end of this tutorial. We've reviewed how to res prims, we've learned about path cutting, and we've learned how to hollow out prims. In the next tutorial, we'll learn how to build a bench together using all the skills that we've learned so far. As always, Thank you for watching. I hope you'll tune in for the next tutorial. Keep building, keep practicing, and have fun.